Now, once we know what is prompt engineering, it's time to use those things in the code. See, the thing is when you build application, you want to make it AI enabled, right? So basically that's why we have learned prompt engineering, what prompts you have to send. But then in the application, how will you connect to the open AI models or any other models for that matter? Now for that, you have to write some code to connect with the models. Now, there are two things here. One, you can run the model on your local machine or you can run the model on their own servers. Now, of course, the proprietary models, they will not be available for you to run on your machine, but there are some models available. So example, you can use DeepSeq, you can use Llama. There are multiple models like Mistral, which you can run on your machine with the help of Olama or some other tool. But then here, let's stick to OpenAI and let's see how it works. Then of course, if you want to use Claude, if you want to use uh, Gemini, that's your choice. So here, let's try to do that. And the way we are going to go forward is, of course, we will be doing something on VS Code, but I want to take you to this page, which is the OpenAI library. So when you search for this, of course, not just for Python, it provides you option for different languages. See, when you want to connect with OpenAI with any other, any other language, the first thing is API and second thing is API key. Again, we'll talk about why do we need API key later, but we do need API. Now, this API, when you hit with a question, OpenAI will take that as an input and run some processing on it, uh, of course, the AI model, and it will give you the output. And that's what we are expecting now. So you can do that by hitting the API. But then OpenAI says, let me make your job a bit easy. So if you use any of this language, let's say JavaScript, Python, .NET languages, or Java or Go, you can use directly their official SDK and you can use it. So example, if I use Java, I can just use this code. If I use Python, I can use this code to make it work. Uh, the only thing you need to do is you need to set this API a key and then you can use this code and make it work. Okay, but then why do we need a API key? See, the thing is you are using AI models on OpenAI servers. Now to run the model, to process your request, you they need to spend a lot of amount of energy, computation, a lot of stuff, right? And that, that's why they charge, charge you for that. If you run the model on your own machine, you don't have to pay them. You are wasting your, I mean, you are not wasting, but you're using your own resources, right? Personally, I prefer to run it locally, but then there's a limitation of the hardware, right? And that's why it makes sense to use their cloud servers. Now, when you want to use it, you have to pay for it. Now, how do you do that? It's very simple. Uh, when you, once you're logged into openai.com, uh, so this is where you have to go. In fact, I will go to openai.com. There will be a login option. But when you say login, click on the API platform. Let's stick to billing first and then we'll move towards API key. And when you go to billing, this is the credit balance which I have in my account, which is $3.45. Now, why do you need this amount is because of course you are going to request to the OpenAI server, they will respond. And based on how many tokens you're using in terms of input and output, it will charge you some amount, right? So add some balance here. By default, you'll be having zero. And once you add, it will use it from your account. Now, how much is required? I would say $5 for the entire course. I think that should be enough. Provided in later we are going to work with images, maybe audio it will consume more tokens. But I think $5 should be enough. Otherwise, if you enjoy this course more, you can add more credits. That's a different part. But if you want to start slow, you can add even add $2 and get started with it. Okay, so that's the thing. You have to add balance and make sure that when you do that, auto recharge should be off. Otherwise, you, you will write some code which will consume a lot of tokens and then uh, maybe because of the bug, you're hitting the OpenAI server continuously and then it will charge you. It will auto recharge and then it will keep charging. Okay. And then uh, you, uh, once you added balance there, go to API keys. And this is where you have to key, create a key. I already have few keys here, but when you are new to open your platform, you need to create some keys there. And you will do that from create new secret key. Just click here, mention some name here. And then in the project, select a default project. This is the project which we created, but you can select default project and just click on create secret key. Now, when you do that, it will give you a key, which will be a lengthy key. Make sure that you copy it and paste it somewhere, somewhere safe. No one should be able to access it. Otherwise, once you get the access to your key, and if you don't delete it, they will be using it maybe for malicious use or maybe consuming your tokens, right? We don't want that. And why I'm saying copy it and paste it somewhere is because once you create it, you can't access it again because that's a secret key, right? 
uh, even here you will not be able to see that. Okay, I do have a key on the separate monitor. I will be using that. But uh, yeah, you have to get a key. Once you are done with this, you can simply use this code and make it work. I hope we are in Python. Yeah, we're in Python. Use this code and make it work. But we are not going to directly jump into the official SDK of OpenAI. The reason being, see, the moment you use the official SDK, of course, the number of lines you write will be less, but then it will make it bulky, right? So you have existing software, which is already bulky, and then you add official SDK, it will make it more bulky. So what if you don't want to do that? You can use the code, which I will show you now in some time, which will be using simple HTTP request and response to do that. Is it a recommended way? No, it's because you have to do a lot of stuff to achieve that. Is this a recommended way? Yes, if you are not concerned about the overhead of the official SDK and if you just want to write sort of code, the less code you write, less bugs you have to work with. So I would prefer this one, or maybe even I will prefer to use some framework, but different companies have different approach for this, different teams have different approach. So let's see different approaches. Okay, so where do we want to get started? So let's open VS Code. Now what you need here is the package manager, which we can will be using UV here, or you can use anything else which you like. Uh, so open terminal and make sure that you have UV with you. Otherwise you can just say pip install UV. Now once you have UV, you have to initialize this project with the help of UV. And when I do that, you can see there are so many things which we have here. Uh, next, you will be also adding the python.env for the environment file, which where you will save your environment variables like OpenAI key. So let's create that so that we don't have to do that later. Okay, and looks good. So if I expand, there are not a lot of libraries here. Okay, there are only two. Uh, we need one more actually, which is for the request. So I will say UV add requests, enter, and that's done. Let's see if we have request because we are send, going to send the request to the OpenAI server. So we need this package. So basically to activate it, expand your ENV and go to script. In this, you will find this file, which is activate PS, uh, PS1, which is for the PowerShell, and copy the YouTube path, paste it here, enter, and that activates, clear. And now let's again run the main file, so main.py, enter, and you got the output, perfect. Now, once you have done everything required to run the code, let's write the code now in the main.py itself. So let's remove everything here. So what exactly we are trying to achieve is send a request to the OpenAI server or the OpenAI model and get the response, right? With the help of Python code. And we also need the environment variable. Uh, we, we missed that. So we'll say dot env. In this, you're going to basically have open API key. And this is where you have to mention the key. Now, as I mentioned, I already have a key in my other tab. Just looking for it, yeah. I got it. So copy and paste it here. So that's my key. Make sure that you don't have any space at the end. And I hope my editor will hide the key from you. Uh, okay, so once you have added the key there, the next step is you have to import OS for the key uh, to get it from the environment. Uh, then we have to also work with request to send the request to the OpenAI server. Then we will be working with the JSON data, which you will receive. And then we have to also load our .env. So we'll say .env import load.env. And uh, we need to also run this method or function to load the environment variables. Now, once you have done the basic imports and loaded the env, the next thing is we have to save our key somewhere. So I will say API key equal to uh, it will be coming from the environment file, which is env file. So we'll do this. It will load the API key, but this should be our open AI API key, not any other API key. And once you have that, so now the copilot is suggesting some code now. So why do we need a header here? See, when you want to send the request to the server, uh, we are going to use HTTP protocol, right? And in this, you are going to specify the URI, which is very important because open AI has an API, which you have to hit. So you have to specify the URI. Next, you have to send some authorization, right? You have to send the key and also the content type you're going to consume. So this is what you will be setting in the header. Then you will be also passing the payload. So it is generating something, but we'll also send the payload. Now what this payload will have. Now in this, you have to basically pass certain things. Example, which model you're going to work with. Next, what exactly message a user is sending to the server. So at this point, I want this AI model to, be, uh, to behave like a movie review expert and recommend one comedy movie, one Bollywood comedy movie, which 
with SRK in it. Uh, and that should it should recommend a movie, right? That's what I want. Uh, that's what I'm going to specify in the payload. So in the payload, first let's specify the model. And I'm going to use model which is 40040. Then we have to specify the message. Now this message will be of two types. Of course, system is not compulsory. User will be compulsory because that's what you're sending. Uh, but we can basically have two type of messages here. We can have system message, we can have user message. In system message, basically you can specify the behavior, the role of it. If you remember in the prompt engineering, we have specified the role prompting where if you specify what of role it is going to follow, it will give you a better answer. Uh, that's a system system message. The user message will be what message a user is actually sending. So in this case, it is explain the theory of relativity in simple terms. No, we don't want to go in that now. I will simply say you are a movie reviewer. Okay, we can say you were, you were a bot. And I will say the question is name a Bollywood comedy movie with SRK as a lead. Take it. Works. Okay. And then at the end, I can also say, give me just the name of the movie. Okay. I don't want everything about the movie, just the name. Okay. Now this is the message which you need. And okay. And let's end it. Okay. Now it is suggesting the response as well. I've not typed it. It is giving by the chat uh, copilot. So I will say response. Now this is what you need. So basically you have to use request to send a request in the post form. So we are sending a post request now in which you have to specify the URI. So instead of writing URI here, it will be better if you write the URI somewhere here. So the URI would be this, which is HTTPS colon slash slash api dot open ai dot com slash v1 slash chat dot completion. This is a URI and you are going to replace this URI in this code. Next, you have to specify the headers, which you, you'll be sending this header and then the JSON, which is in the payload. Okay, this is what you're going to send. And once you've got the response, you are just going to print it as response dot JSON, right? So Copilot works. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, so this is the code, right? And know that we are using the SDK of Python here from open ai. Okay, simple. Python code, okay, maybe simple, may not be simple, depending upon what level of Python you know, but this is what it is. And now let's run this and see what goes wrong. So I will say py and waiting for the response. There's no error because it's taking a lot of time and you got the message and you can see it, you, it is giving you a JSON data. Of course, out of all this, you just want one thing, which is the content, which is Gen Express, right? Which is the movie name. I love this movie, but there are other things as well, like the prompt tokens, how many tokens you have used for the prompts, then completion tokens, total token used is 40 tokens. And it is impacting my billing there, right? The grades. But yeah, that's a code. So simple, right? You can do the same thing with the help of the code mentioned here. So I can simply copy this. So instead of using the code which we have used here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select all, delete. Okay, I know that's weird, but that's the power, right? Deleting the code. Uh, just write this code, right? The only problem is it will not going to load your uh, env file. So what we're going to do is we are going to write that code for the env. So load, uh, not this, not this. From .env, uh, load .env, and then let's call that method so that it will load the environment. And that's it. This is what you need. Let's use GPT-5 here instead of 4.0. The only thing I'm going to change is this message, which we have used earlier and I have deleted that. Uh, no problem. I'm just going to type it now. Name a uh, Bollywood comedy movie with SRK as lead actor. Name just the movie title. Okay. Almost the same message. And now with that, let's see if this works. Okay. Now the thing is, it might work in this machine because I've already added OpenAI. I'm not sure if it is added in the project. Let's run this. Okay, we got the error. So it says uh, there's a problem with the module, uh, which is this from OpenAI import OpenAI. So you have to add OpenAI as well. So UV add OpenAI. Let's add that and that's done. So if you're using pip, you can also use that. I'm using UV here. That works. And now done this, taking some time, no error. And this time it should only give you one name. Okay, turn next space. I will say, which is not Chennai Express because I've, I've watched this movie multiple times. I can still watch it, but suggest me some other movie, some good movie, not Dilwale. Waiting for the answer and okay, Bacha, again, good movie. Nice, nice. So GPT-5 is better 
than other movie recommendations. Cool. So yeah, that's about this, which is uh, using OpenAI with the help of Python. We have seen two code, one without the official SDK and one with the official SDK. But if you want to see a simple code where you are using OpenAI, you are using the class of OpenAI, creating the object of it, and then using that object of client to send the request with the models mentioned and the input, you are getting the response. From response, you just need the output. Perfect. So that's it from this part. See you in the next video.